Yo, who's next to get an extension from the Jacksonville Jaguars? We're going to talk about it here on today's show. You are Locked On Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That's right. It is your team every day here on Locked On Jaguars. Welcome to the Locked On Jaguars podcast. I'm the host of the, of the show, Tony Wiggins. You can find us on YouTube for free. You can subscribe at YouTube. Just go over to the Locked On Jaguars page, hit subscribe, hit the like button, and then hit the bell so that you get notifications each and every time we drop an episode. How about that? Wherever you get your audio podcast too, make sure you check into that location so that you do not miss an episode of Locked on Jaguars. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150. Bucks. Win or lose, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Shout out to the everydayers for joining us here every single day. Also, because it's your team every day, and we appreciate that. If you're not one, you can be one. All you got to do is Pop on the Locked On Jaguars. <clears throat> All right, like DJ Cool says, let me clear my throat and tell you exactly what is going on in today's show. Uh, who should the Jags extend next? That's a really, really good conversation because I know everybody out there and their brother is thinking about Trevor Lawrence, and I get it. I get it. There's really no rush to do that, but I understand it because as long as he's not extended, people are going to sit here and talk about whether or not the team is committed, and most people – feel that that is a conversation that is not worth having because they think that Trevor Lawrence is the quarterback of the future of the Jaguars and they don't want to hear anything else, but we'll talk about it anyway. I'm going to make a case for Tyson Campbell in segment two. And I'm going to tell you why that's important in more ways than one. I think it, I think it serves as a, as a very, very important thing for a number of reasons. Uh, and we'll get into it. A lot of it, it has to do with who I think they're going to, who I think they should target in the draft also. I will also make a case in the third segment for Andre Cisco. And I'll tell you right now, I can understand it. Anyone that believes that um, that Cisco should they want to see him for a whole year, I, I will tell you I understand that. But I'll still make a case for him because it's all about markets. It's all about what everyone is willing to uh, pay for people. And I think he would have a robust market if he ever got free. So let's just go back to the top first and say, what should the Jags or who should the Jags extend next? Um, I'm not doing this because I think the order of the uh, of this is so important, right? Because not everyone's stuff is set up the same way. Like you could, if you wanted to, you could... Um, make sure that you have a fifth year option on both Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne. You could string Trevor out a whole nother season because there's no reason to rush. There would be no reason to rush. They literally almost probably got almost a year and a half before they get to the point where they actually should be doing something or have to do something. And the thing about an extension too is they don't void the current deals. They, they just add on to it at the end of those deals. And at some point, they'll start uh, later on. So so that's why, you know, when some folks say, well, th th you know, go ahead and do it. They're talking about a commitment standpoint when it comes to Trevor. And that is important. I, I truly get that because that also helps uh, pers prospective free agents, especially skill position players and coaches know uh, who they have and what they'll have if they come here. And it won't be like just a one year thing where somebody's running off and doing something else. So, yeah, th there's a lot of ways that you can look at it. I do believe, though, the guys that you have to do uh, before you have to start making those hard decisions, whether you're going to tag a person or not, I think those guys got to go first. And the, the players that are coming up will be the guys that are second round picks. So we can the second and third round guys, we can tell you right now that we know Walker Little. And I, I don't think at this point you, you've seen anything that would suggest that the Jaguars are going to make Walker Little a, a priority. The only thing, the only thing you could see at this point would be some sort of reason for Cam Robinson to not be playing again. 
and Walker Little actually goes in and all of a sudden he has the best camp he's ever had. And then there, you know, the team is like, hey, man, <laughs> hey, we can go ahead and keep this dude. He, you know, he, he's done enough to show us. Even if you've got to move him to right tackle and you want to move Anton over, uh, see if we can keep him around for a little bit, you know, give him a little, give him a little something, not, not, not nothing heavy and, and go ahead and find a commit. But I, I, I just don't believe that when you really look at who they've drafted, the things that they said about what they are and what they aren't, the fact that Cam has uh, a pretty decent number on him in, in terms of uh, salary cap, and yet and still, even in a, a year where the Jags have sort of retooled some things, there is no a commitment to him um, that is longer than like next year. There is no talk about restructuring and lowering that cap figure. There's no guarantee he's going to even be here, if you know, depending on how the draft goes. So the thing is, is the, I say all of that about Cam Robinson to say this. I have no, no reason to believe that they have any confidence whatsoever and walk a little to the point where they're really, really thinking about him being a part of their future. They don't have a reason to have to make that decision now either. But when you think about it, what have you seen or what have they done to really make you believe that, okay, uh, we, we got a plan for him or uh, if we lost him or he, if he left, you know, it kind of messes our plans up. I, I, I don't see it. So uh, shout out to him. I hope he has a good year. Uh, whether he, ends up starting here or, or whatever. I can tell you what he is. He's a kid that made it to the NFL. He's a kid that's going to probably play until he's 32, 33 years old because, like I said, he's pretty good. He, he He's solid, but it's, it's nothing. There's some reason why they haven't. They, they've committed more to, to other guys like Ezra Cleveland. Hell, Tyler Shatley. They, you, you just – and they've talk, they talked up Luke Fortner – who looked like the dude that was playing worse than anybody. They talked him up more than they have anybody. You just can't get them to say anything about Walker Little. At least I haven't seen it. At least I haven't seen it. And I do think um, some of these positions you just can't have okay. You got to have guys that really, really, that you can count on week in and week out to protect Trevor Lawrence, which is why for the life of me, I couldn't understand why they were saying all of those things about Luke Fortin. And then the first chance they get, they went and got Mitch Morris. And Mitch Moore should be a starter. So, you know, got to remind ourselves it's not their job to talk down to their own guys. Uh, but at the same time, we do have to try to figure out have they uh, talked them up enough to make us believe that they're really, really going to be a part of the future. And so far, no. So Trevor Lawrence is the obvious uh, answer for a lot of people. It's like, of course, that's the dude. Uh, he's the priority. But like we talked about before, just because something is a higher priority doesn't mean it has to be the first thing you have to do. Sometimes the thing that's the higher priority actually is the thing that's so much so complex. And I think with Trevor, there will be some complexities to how they do his deal. You have to think so. I mean, we all sit here and think that it's easy and it's monopoly money and go, OK, just look at such and such a deal and then just do that. Yeah, but... Uh, there's more to it. You got people right here talking about a hometown discount. You have folks uh, saying that maybe he'll do what Tom Brady did all of these years and take less money so the Jaguars can spread it out and, and don't understand the ramifications of that is you work for a union that allowed you. People didn't do that to get you to to, to be in the position that you're in. So if if you're next, because once you once you open Pandora's box as a player and start doing stuff like that, other owners will look at their dudes and say, hey, man, go ahead. Look, look at all that goodwill he got for doing that. See, the, the, the fact is, is that Tom Brady did it and we're going, well, maybe Trevor will do it, Tom Brady. See, the fact is that if one person did it, whether we perceive it to be correct or whether it is correct, there's always going to be somebody else that go, well, maybe he'll do the same thing if he wants those same results. Not thinking that, no, oh, everything ain't the same as that. So, you know, it's just sometimes it's just funny to me when I hear people do and say certain things, you know, when it comes to what may or, or may not be happening in terms of uh, those contract negotiations. So I'm going to tell you, we're going to sit, sit. I'm going to sit Trevor aside. Right. I'm going to sit Trevor aside and I'm going to tell you exactly who I believe, I'm going to make a case for Tyson Campbell 
as the first dude that they should uh, extend. And when I do that, I'm going to tell you why I think it's even more important for him uh, than just retention. We'll do that in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. Today's show is sponsored by eBay Motors, where passion, drive, and patience are the formulas for winning championships on the field. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle, level it up to peak performance with superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more. Whether you're in the speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Motors Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Segment number two here on Locked on Jaguars. We're at your team every day. I am Tony Wiggins the host of the Locked on Jaguars podcast, talking about players that we think that they could extend and who I think the next candidate is for an extension. We're going to sit Trevor Lawrence to the side real quick because I do believe that the things that I mentioned are uh, complexity as well as um, the fact that you have a little bit more time and a few more options with him. And I think we're going to sit him aside. We're going to sit Travis Etienne aside too, because I, I don't. There's no need to do that. He's a running back, you know, by position, which will lead you back to thinking like, okay, well, why did they take a running back in the first round in the first place? That it's a whole different argument and thing, and I get it. And he's also a running back with, even though he had an injury, he has less wear and tear on his body because he sat out the entire first season with that injury. So it's going to be a little bit. Uh, of something to think about with him too to see if they do something different with him than other teams have done we haven't really had a whole bunch of first round running backs get to this point uh since folks started doing business differently with running backs running backs also the things is the thing is is in the offseason last year they were treated <laughs> they were treated poorly and then all of a sudden this year they got paid so there's a lot to be desired when it comes to trying to have that conversation with not a huge sample size of uh, guys like Travis Etienne because it's rare that a running back goes in the first round uh, since people started looking at things a little bit differently. So we will get to uh, some other players. Walk a little. We're not sitting them aside. We all we walk through that conversation. Uh, I don't I don't believe walk a little is too much of a priority when it comes to uh, an extension. Uh, one that he'll sign anyway. I mean, you could probably offer him, a, you know, a, something to keep him around for the next four years in development, but he ain't going to pay him a whole bunch and he'd be crazy to sign it. Uh, he'd probably be looking for a little bit of a new opportunity somewhere else. So we'll go to the defensive side of the ball. Devon Hamilton would have been in this stage or in this conversation with the exception of the fact that Devon Hamilton signed his extension last year. So uh, that could turn out to be a huge bargain, especially if Devon Hamilton actually gets healthy uh, and is able to uh, be able to come out and, and, and play a lot better. Uh, uh, both linebackers, they, they have two more years um, when it comes to, I'm talking about uh, not Foyle, little kind of got his extension, but uh, Devin Lloyd and Chad Moomer. So we won't worry about them. Uh, I do think both of them are fighting this year, though, to see, Okay, Chad Moomer has to take somebody's job if he's going to uh, think that he's going to be a Jaguar long term, and it's best for him to try to do that this year. I don't think he's going to do it, and I, and I don't. And, and I know when I said that there was a collective who, whose job he ain't taking Devin Lloyd's job, but it, it is time for one of them to distinguish themselves as that. And and granted, it's been Devin Lloyd up to this point, so we're not going to be silly about it. Uh, but if it's now or never for him to say, hey, wait one minute, or just give me a second. So it's now or never for that. So 
the candidates that I'm going to talk about, the two guys that I think are up next for an extension and that do early, my number one priority will be Tyson Campbell, cornerback Tyson Campbell. And here's why. There is obviously, even though safeties have gotten paid as of late, obviously there is a, there's a premium on guys who can guard and play outside. There's also a premium on, guy, on guys that have a really, really good physical ability that can do that. You catch a guy over six feet, six one, two hundred pounds with track speed. They're going to give players like that more opportunities than they do left-handed pitchers in Major League Baseball because this is just the way it goes. You need people who can compete on the outside. No, Tyson Campbell isn't the greatest uh, with his ball skills. He has improved in that area. And then with teams that even teams that play man to man while while playing man to man and and having his back to the quarterback isn't his greatest attribute. There's a way you can get around that because you can play press bail, which does allow. I remember I I asked um, Dominique Rogers Kamari, who's like a family member. I asked him. I thought I knew it, but I just said, just in case from an NFL perspective, from a cornerback perspective, what's the difference? He says, well, you get a chance to see a lot of stuff pre-snap and you get a chance also with one eye on the receiver. He's not up on you fast enough that you can at least also with your peripheral vision, see what's going on with the guards. And he talked about who's pulling and who's doing whatever, because that also lets you know what the quarterback is going to do and what his intention is and how quickly he's trying to get rid of the ball. So all of those things uh, really uh, play into it the reason why I think he should be extended is because he can absolutely play in this new system. If they're going to be playing press bail. Plus I still think guys can learn. I still got my buddy who was a scout here with the Jaguars for a long time. Used to get teed off when you talk about guys that were still in their twenties and people thought they still couldn't learn to do new things. Not ideal that, you know, he doesn't have those natural ball skills, but I think it still works. But here's why it also works for me because I want Queen and Mitchell in the draft right so i i like to when i think about the prospect of adding players i like to take the that's why i said folks that may not know this i I don't like doing mock drafts before free agency because i like adding guys in tandem i like to see what kind of juice both of them have together like how does it mix and does it add more than just a, a sort of cherry picking element to our team so when i think about the strengths and the attributes of Tyson Campbell paired with those of Quinion Mitchell, who does have great ball skills, who also is physical. And I think about those two guys together on a week by week basis, competing against the great athletes that are the number one and number two receiver on the other team. So I, when I, when I consider all of that, those are the reasons why I, I sort of like, fall in love with certain players based on the guys that they already added, right? So when you add that physicality along with Eric Armstead, you see, you retain Josh Allen and you still have Trayvon. You make sure your your, your off-ball linebacker was set and, and your leader was still there. There starts to, to be this thing where when the team says that they lack physicality, you know, the, the natural inclination for me and everybody else included is to just think that they need to add a whole bunch of 350 pound players, whereas they could just be adding guys who lead with physicality and just have physical as their nature. Gabe Davis is another one. So when you start adding physicality across the roster, as opposed to just the dudes that weigh 310, 320 pounds, it take it hits a little bit differently when you do it in tandems. And so, that's why Tyson Campbell for me uh, is the number one candidate for an extension. I think you get it done now. I think it's going to cost a lot later. And the difference between what it will cost now and later for a corner is way higher than the difference between what it will cost now and later for a safety who would be my second choice for extension. And that would be Andre Cisco. Before I tell you about that, it's Locked On NFL's Mock Draft Live on April 17th at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the Free Fire TV channels app on Amazon. Find the ultimate six episodes series on April 17th 
at 7 Eastern time to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL mock draft on April 17th is at 7 Eastern time. Streaming live on Locked On Sports Today, 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All right, we're going to talk about the Cisco Kid, and I'm going to tell you why I think Andre Cisco should be up next to get a contract extension after Tyson Campbell. Do in just a second here on Locked On Jaguar. Today's show is sponsored by Monopoly Go. That's right. I've been told I'm a very competitive person. Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of am very, very competitive about everything. Sports, card games, you have it, right? Okay, well, yeah, I do have a little bit of that. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing around with friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. But now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboard showed me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just about my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. And I got to let you know about FanDuel. That's right. FanDuel is the absolute truth. You guys know that. It's time for the NBA and the NHL, man, with the playoffs, man. Everybody, the seedings are getting ready. These play, play-in games. Nobody's sitting anybody down anymore, right? And baseball is also in full swing. And FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel slash Locked On and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, running it down here third and final segment on Locked On Jaguars. Talked about who should be the next person to be extended within reason. We know it's Trevor Lawrence, but we kind of walked around that and told you how you can get a little bit more time to do that. Why? I think it's Tyson Campbell. And now I'll tell you why the next candidate should be Andre Sisco. I can think of a lot of teams that won championships that had sustained retention and very, very deliberate intention of the quarterbacks of the various levels of the team. Josh Allen, obviously, is the team captain, right? One of the vocal leaders, and rightfully so, on and off the field, super professional. Foyer Lucan got his extension. Same guy, right? Super, super professional, team player. And that's one of the underrated things that Trent Baalke did that I kind of noticed uh, after the fact is that he shored up the leadership on that side of the ball and rewarded the guys who actually uh, conduct themselves like uh, like so, like quarterbacks. Well, Andre Sisco is the dude that does it for the secondary. In fact, the way he plays, the way he comes flying off, uh, he might jump for a loose ball here, doesn't miss, doesn't miss tackles very often, at least ones that make you cringe. He flies off the field on he flies on, uh, uh, on the field on tape. When you're watching the Jaguars play, you'll go who's number five if you don't know. And he patrols the back end of the defense. I ain't sitting there saying he's Earl Thomas or Ed Reed, but where I am, what I am saying, he does have an athletic profile, and he does have a way of carrying himself and leading the team that makes you want to have that leader on that level. You have a leader on every single level of the team, and I think 
he's good for that. I also believe you pay him now, you don't have to pay him as much as you have to pay him next year because I think he's going to have a big year. Now, that big year depends mainly on the fact that he has to stay healthy. Andre Sisco has not really found himself to be the healthiest person on the team. And while I think he may be their biggest playmaker and he may benefit more than anybody from more pressure up front, more pressing on the outside, forcing quarterbacks to do things quickly, and Andre Sisco can play can play a little pity pat with him and and learn you know and play that game and really be very very difficult along with Darnell Savage being the showing up uh, the uh, the slot area so I think all of these things could work and play together but I'm a big fan of keeping guys like Andre Cisco around he'd be another uh, identity player kept on this team and that that is built on what I call football playing Jesse's built on guys that work hard. That, that, that are on the same page, that are coached well together. I do believe that if you do it and then you add <clears throat> you add a player, now you, you look at a team, excuse me, <clears throat> you look at a team that right now only have uh, Darnell Savage and uh, under contract next year. After this one, Darnell Savage and uh, Ronald Darby. Now you go from that to having a first-round pick as a corner, having a uh, an expiring contract being extended having a safety being extended now and then you have antonio johnson now it's like everybody your nickel your dime both starters your safety your slot everybody's on the contract for the next four years and we continue to talk about the importance of having that continuity uh, that you need to eventually order uh to, to eventually be good to eventually be good that would be great to have with a first-year defense coordinator and a first-year passing game coordinator uh, with Chris Richards. That would be, I, I think that'd be a real, real good scenario for Jacksonville. And it just hit me while I was saying it, how, how good that would feel uh, going into the season if that were to happen. This turned out better than I thought because I actually do feel good about this plan. I do. I really, really do. All right, man, I'll tell you something else I feel good about, and that is Locked On Sports Today. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available in the free Fire TV channels yeah. it's been fun man it's going to continue to be fun i'm going to go through some more mocks today look through a lot of information from the people that i trust make some phone calls to see if there's anything weird going on i, I keep hearing these rumors about a trade up with, in jacksonville involving rome odooms we'll see about that uh, i'm hearing i heard a crazy rumor that the colts would even trade up to go get brock bowers that they that they really want brock bowers and then most teams around the league have Quinion Mitchell as the number one corner coming off the board. So that might be problematic for me uh, with uh, who I have ultimately decided who I want on my uh, got to have if he gets to you uh, at that spot. All right, man, but we'll be uh, continuing to run through it for the rest of uh, our time uh, for the rest of the week. And we'll see you tomorrow here on another edition of Locked on Jaguar.